This is the assignment board. Not only does it list the stories we cover every day on Pulse, it's also a pretty good indication of what we've been up to the past 20 years. Aside from all the national and international stories, we've covered over 55,000 local stories. Sure, on quiet weekends when nothing much has been happening, we've covered such things as dog shows and flower shows, but we've also brought you the major events of the day. The assassination of President John Kennedy, the moonwalk, the rise and fall of Richard Nixon, the Trudeau years, the Vietnam War, the October crisis, and the independence referendum. Story number one on that very first pulse in January of 1961 was introduced by our anchorman at the time, Dean Kay. Murder on the waterfront. It happened last night when a 55-year-old tavern manager was shot down during a holdup on Lower St. Lawrence Boulevard. It was the city's second slaying of the new year. The victim was Emile Chaplot, father of five and night manager of the Liverpool House Tavern. Homicide squad detectives are investigating, but the only clue they have is the spent casing of a 25 caliber bullet. The tavern is a well-known waterfront landmark, but the area is deserted during the winter. The body was found slumped in the doorway of the tavern by a friend of the victim. The bullet had pierced his head. Inspector Joe Bedard and Captain Henri Francoeur are conducting the investigation. In those days, everything was black and white, and the few reports there were were kept very simple. But that didn't mean they didn't work hard and fast. The man who set up the Pulse newsroom and guided it over its first 13 years was Bert Cannings. Quite early in the history of our news show, Bert began appearing on Pulse with his comments, ending with a phrase that became very familiar to Montrealers. Well, I used to say, uh, what say you? If you have any observations, write me at Canning's comment, 405 Ogilvy. I didn't know the zip code in those days, but... And that, that brought response. I used to get anywhere from 20 to 50 letters a week. I could only answer five or six on, on the given day when we responded. Bert really got people riled up in those days. He says, quote, in your never failing effort to scatter gems of stupidity, you reached a new low in your suggestion. It's an indication of your complete senility or the fact that you have made a friend amongst the poor downtrodden students of that magnificent, well-subsidized University of Montreal. And I say, Patricia, Senile, me at 43? This from George Connell of 7755 Arundel Place in Ville d'Anjou says, quote, I suggest, Mr. Cannings, that your, skip, uh, your script rather, was ill-prepared and probably meaningless to most people. I trust you will provide a more immediately feasible proposal uh, to Quebec's education crisis in the future, instead of wasting viewers' times with fallacious recommendations. And I say, George, considering all the mail I got, it couldn't have been meaningless. It was not until 1966 that we began broadcasting in color. By 1969, Pulse was an hour long, and there was a new anchorman. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrew Marquis, and this is Pulse for Tuesday, January 21st. Tonight's reports from Montreal, Paris, and Tokyo. Bird Cannings is unhappy about the news media and Pierre Elliott Trudeau. I don't have the girlfriends, but I sure side with Trudeau. Bill Hoagland is still involved with the weather. And Annie, it's a thirsty problem. As we looked through all the old Pulse film and tape, Bill kept popping up everywhere. On the set, in the newsroom, and out on the street where news was happening. Since joining Pulse News in 1963, Bill has worked his way to the anchor desk. It's a pretty good job, really. It's clean work, there's no lifting, and you get to stay inside in the winter when it's cold out there. This man would be destined to come in from the cold as well. That keen young reporter you just saw was Mike Donegan. 
Mike is now the news director for Pulse News. Uh, his office is in here, right off the main Pulse newsroom. There's glass on the walls so he can see what we're doing at every minute of the day when we're inside the station. We're going to check with Mike now, have a little talk with him. I believe we're walking in on him now as he's doing one of his famous Mike Donigan comments. You got a, what about a paragraph there? Can we take a look at that, Mike? Did you see what's coming up tonight, perhaps? Well, we have strict rules against that, uh, Brian. Even even I don't get to read it, which accounts for <laughs> how, how badly I do it on air. Uh, do you get a lot of mail from people taking uh, exception to what you've said on given topics? Not really, because what I say is so logical that people can argue, can't argue with it. I find it. <laughs> you've been here pretty well since day one. Uh, obviously, a lot of changes have taken place from black and white film, I guess, to yeah. videotape and color, a lot of changes. You've just covered it all, I think. Uh, no, the, the tr technological advance has been tremendous over the years. Uh, I can go back and, and think of just advances like color film, and then videotape coming in, color videotape. Uh, we're now into electronic news gathering, which of course means the difference between film cameras and electronic cameras. Uh, coming in the, in the future will be uh, satellite. We'll be able to satellite locally anywhere from Montreal. That's coming in quite soon. And I think the next step, probably in about five years, we're going to see computerized newsrooms, uh, which will make our jobs uh, a little easier to do. Uh, I think the, the most important thing, though, is that uh, we've got to remain good journalists. And there was a major announcement in the world of sports today. With that story, Dick Irvin. Well, Andy, it appears as though the folks out in Vancouver and those in Buffalo, New York, will have to wait a while before seeing an NHL game that is not sent to them by Hockey Night in Canada. The Police Olympics, the arrival of the Expos, NHL expansion, and 101 Alouette quarterbacks. Pulse Sports Director Dick Irvin reported on it all during his 20 years at CFCF 12. It's been a wonderful place to be, Montreal. Uh, you know, when I started here, nobody had ever heard of a Montreal Expo or a Pittsburgh Penguin or a California Golden Seal. There's been so much happening in sport uh, all through the last 20 years that it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of changes took place over that period. Well, exactly. Uh, I still say the biggest uh, story in Montreal through the time was the arrival of the Expo. Uh, it's just changed the sporting face of the city uh, to a tremendous degree. And yes, we did go through a few Alouette quarterbacks. I did the radio broadcast of the games for eight years, and you know that was the period when you didn't know the players out of program. But that was a lot of fun. And it's clear in southwestern Quebec, still mainly clear. In eastern and southern Ontario, temperatures 10, 12 degrees above seasonable values. Another early arrival on the pulse scene was Don McGowan. He was as unpredictable as the highs and lows he kept track of on what had to be the most colorful map in the whole world. Dawn is always on, even when the lights go down. This is the close of Pulse in August of 1968. We'll be back with more news on Pulse tonight at 11.18. Stay tuned now for The Flying Nun, next in view on TV 12. No look back at any news show would be complete without a few of the outtakes some of the things which, for obvious reasons, never made it onto the air. First, Lynn Desjardins, trying to do a sign-off and being interrupted by a patriotic jogger who didn't have a watch. Now, 12.30. I'm nervous. I'm just going to make confidence. Many of Montreal's 70,000 strong Greek community are here at St. George's Greek Orthodox Cathedral. Not all Greeks are celebrating today, however. Those on the old calendar must both mark the occasion. What is this will? How dead has it been? How dead has it been? Very dead. How long has it been dead? It's been quite dead for two or three days. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from all the national and international stories, we've reported on 55,000, over 55,000. And lest there be any doubt about it, the Quebec Liberal Party intends to throw all it's got into making sure that he gets there. Brian Nelson, Pulse News. This last one we'd like to preface with a few words about Herb Luft. Herb is a kind and a gentle man, but when running up against a deadline, even he can lose his temper. Herb was trying to do a sign-off in front of some school children. The youngsters were all quite civilized until the camera started rolling. Bar Barnes says the system appears to be working well, but he warns that fatal accidents might still occur. You jerks. 
To some of you, this may have looked like someone at Channel 12 going through the old Pulse News scrapbook and patting ourselves on the back. Well, we didn't mean to be that obvious, but the fact is we're proud of the people who work hard day in, day out, each making their own special contribution to our new show. Because of the way they do their jobs, Early Pulse now draws an audience of about 300,000 people. It is the third most watched regularly scheduled television program in all of Montreal. We thank you for watching. And we hope you'll rely on us for your news, sports, and weather for, oh, at least another 20 years. Onward now into our 21st year. And with more news of this day, here's Bill Hoagland.